So hi guys, my name is Mansi Anand, and I welcome you to the series called RBI Twenty Four Seven. So guys, as you all know, I'm your mentor for this series, and I'm a GRF holder in Commerce and Management. I've done my post graduation from Delhi School of Economics. So this was a little introduction about your mentor. And as most of you would be knowing that we conduct a five series session, a five question uh, series. So before moving to the first question for today, I would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel. If you are a new entrant here and you haven't subscribed to us, don't forget to press this button. It can help you to stay in touch with us and get a lot, get access to a lot of good content. Right after that, don't forget to press this bell icon which is flashing on the screen. It can help you to stay updated regarding every notification that comes up. Right and after that. Don't forget to uh, join our Telegram group. On this group, you can post all your doubts and queries, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Right? Okay. So I hope you are ready for question number one. Here is your question number one. Okay. This question talks about listing pop. A very interesting topic to talk about. Select the correct option about listing pop. Five options given to you. You have to select the correct one. And the correct option is option D. So the lower the pricing, the better is the prospect of a listing pop. First of all, before understanding this, we have to understand what is the meaning of listing pop. So guys, you know that when shares or any other securities, they get listed on a stock exchange, then we are able to trade them in a regulated manner, right? So first these shares, they become public, their IPO comes and after that they get listed on a stock exchange. So there is some period between, uh, be between allotting, the share, uh, allotting the shares to shareholders and after that getting listed on stock exchange. So this listing pop, this means the gain that a share takes into account on the first day of getting listed on a stock exchange. Here you can see it is the percentage gain that the stock witnesses on the first day of on the day of listing as compared to the price at which the share was allotted in the IPO. So let's say there is a company and it comes out with a uh, that comes out with an IPO. So recently a company that has came that has come out with an IPO. Now this company invites IPO. It means it is inviting people to buy its shares, right? So if I'm an investor interested in this company, I'm going to apply for buying the shares of this company. Now it is up to the company whether it allots the shares to me or not, because it might be possible that the shares, the number of shares that it wants to issue, uh, the number of applicants is uh, is a lot is lot more than that, which is a situation of over subscription. When the number of applicants is high as compared to the number of shares that are going to be issued. So now it is up to the company whether it allots the shares to me or not, right? After that, when it allots the shares to holders, after that it lists itself on a stock exchange, right? So see, now when it is listed on a stock exchange, its trading started, starts and when trading starts, the prices are bound to fluctuate. So if after an IPO, there are many investors, let's say uh, I'm not able to uh, I was not allotted any share during the IPO, but I'm still adamant to own shares of this company. So I might buy it in the trading session when it op opens on the stock exchange. And if there are many investors like me who still want to buy the shares, uh, if, they are, if, if they were not allotted any shares during the course of IPO, then they are going to demand a lot, pushing the price of the shares very high on the first day right so this gain this rise in price is known as listing pop the share uh, the price of the share that pops when it gets listed on stock exchange right so this is the money company leaves on the table for ipo investors 
so see the people who got allotted the shares during ipo it uh, there is a benefit for them because people investors like me who were waiting for uh, the shares to get listed on stock exchange so that we can buy them that's a good opportunity for people already holding the shares who were allotted in the course of ipo so profit for them right most of them who tend to end cash their investment on the listing day itself so a uh, fintech digital services pharmaceuticals health and personal so many see there is a trend for every company so currently these are some sectors uh, witnessing a resurge in their in the prices of their shares so they are clearly the flavor of the season and investment avenues like real estate are no longer providing adequate returns so that depends what sort of company is it if we are talking about this company is it uh, is it is it able to uh, is it able to penetrate the market or is it able to spike the interest in investors or not right so as long as pricing remains fair listing pop will be large and public's confidence in the ipo market will be enhanced so listing pop gives us an indication that what is the mood of the market regarding shares of a particular company if it if public's confidence is good there is trust on the shares then there is going to be a large listing pop will increase the prospects of upcoming ipos and if there are a lot of pops on the listing day that is going to encourage other companies to come up with their ipos guys uh, we have discussed about this but there is one point that i would like to ask you see listing pop it might be good for investors but what do you think uh, what what do you think it is for the companies right How, what does it indicate for the company see for companies it tells them that if they might have brought the ipo at a higher price uh, people might have bought it so it shows that the price the price at which ipo came that was under priced people are having more preference for their share for the particular company shares that is why we said here <coughs> the lower the pricing of ipo the better the prospect prospect of a huge listing for right so i hope now you are clear with this so it shows that companies could have brought the ipo at a larger uh, at a at a higher price and raised a lot more money than they have already done right so moving to question number 2 for today here is your question number 2 and this question says where can an investor buy or sell ipo shares or applications before they are officially launched for trading on the stock exchange right let us move to the solution for this question and the solution is option b which tells us that the correct answer is grey market so we all have heard about white markets and black markets so you know white market is something where the dealing happens in a legal and regulated manner and in black market usually the goods which are smuggled into the country illegally or the goods on which tax has to be saved illegally or tax has to be evaded i think evaded is a better word tax has to be evaded those goods when they uh, get in the market for dealings they enter into black market now if we are talking about ipos there comes a market called grey market okay here you can see it is the over the counter market that means it is not regulated by stock exchange if it is otc where deals are done in person only among the trusted group of investors and the deals are done in cash so basically it's an uh, it's it's a market for those people who still want to buy the shares of a company and they do not even want to wait for the listing of the ipo on the stock exchange right so the deals are usually facilitated by the brokers in neighborhood so it happens in a very informal manner see guys it is simply dealing of shares uh, before the listing of the company on a stock exchange so you see when the company lists on a stock exchange there is a huge possibility of trading and there is a huge possibility of having a uh, having a very higher gain because there are a lot of uh, investors who are going to trade when once the company is listed on the 
uh, stock exchange so to to avail the benefit of a listing pop many investors they want to own the shares even if they were not allotted those shares in the process of ipo here is when the gray market comes into the scene people who have been allotted the ipos uh, the shares during the ipos they sell the uh, they sell their shares or securities at a premium in this gray market to people who want to avail the benefit of listing pop and want to own the shares before listing right so usually facilitated by broker in neighborhood as i just told you happens in a very informal manner nothing legal nothing according to the uh, laws nothing regulated in this market investor could sell the ipo or ipo application we are going to discuss about it before the company gets listed on the stock exchange ipo gray market premium so guys this is the word you guys have been asking in the comments the gray market premium see gray market premium is what an investor has to pay in gray market for acquiring the share so let's say a company comes up with an ipo and the price of the security during ipo is rupees 200 and now when it is going to list on stock exchange it is it is expected that it is going to open at 500 that means uh, once it gets listed on stock exchange it is going to trade at 500 so there is a, a benefit of 300 so an investor like me who was not allotted the shares during ipo i deadly want these shares so that is why i might resort to the gray market where i might buy these shares at 300 so this excess of 100 rupees so 100 market is the gray market premium the extra which i have to pay to acquire this share in the gray market because obviously this person who has been allotted in the ipo this person also wants to uh, make some profit that is why he is charging me 100 rupees extra now you must be thinking that why does this person want to sell shares to me if it is expected that the share is going to be traded trading at 500 once it gets listed so this is because because this is just expectation or this is just hope this 500 amount right so that is why there is a risk involved but if this person sells shares to me at 300 per share so that is a fixed income right and after that the risk is mine if the trading happens at 500 or above i am at a profit level but if the price falls below 300 then i am in loss right so guys um this is when uh, the shares are the securities are dealt before getting listed so there is one more thing ipo applications are also sold in gray market application means so i just told you that i applied for the shares of a company which i was not allotted right or let's say me and my friend we both applied for the shares of same company now till now the shares have not been allotted but i just want to increase my chances of acquiring the shares that is why i'll ask my friend to sell me the application so that i have more application forms so what if the shares are not allotted to me if they are allotted to my friend they will also belong to me because i am buying the application so applications are also sold in gray market right you can see here so then ipo applications at a premium ipo shares before they are listed on stock exchange so there is one more word cost of rate it is the rate at which you can sell the ipo application for a fixed price irrespective you get the allotment or not so if i buy my friend's application and if both of us do not get any shares then it's my risk and i am in the loss if uh, if i don't if i if no one gets allotted the shares right moving ahead to the next question for today okay before uh, moving to question number 3 you can see here a meme regarding the gray market okay third question third question says sebi on 24 september kept the advisory fees charged by registered investment advisors at dash of the assets under advice or dash if they charge a flat fee very simple question the solution for this question is option e that means 2.5% of assets under advice or 125000 if they are charging a flat 
field right so guys if you remember in a previous session we discussed that how authorities have asked the registered investment advisors to separate two functions the advisory function and the distribution function so basically they are saying that if a person is providing an investor or a client with advice that okay you put your money into this investment or don't put into this investment then you're not going to sell that client the your own products either you can be an advisor or you can be a distributor you can sell the products for a commission to the client but one person cannot provoke cannot provide both of these uh, services unless and until in some exceptional circumstances right so this is to prevent conflict of interest interest we have already discussed it in one of our previous sessions now uh, sebi has put a limit to the to the amount that they can charge as their fees the registered investment advisors so if there are they, they are advisors they are not allowed to distribute the services right okay as you can see here investment advisory agreements incorporating the terms laid down by sebi existing clients can opt for either advisory or distribution services at a group or family level now sebi has allowed grandfathering of existing assets so they are saying all those people who have already invested in the schemes they might not uh, they uh, need not make any changes and they are exempted from the new rules but the new uh deals or the new agreements that have that take place they have to be they have to be according the new laws right so advisors with over 150 clients must corporatize their practices or stop signing the new clients or rii's also comply with the qualification threshold that has been proposed by sebi so basically sebi proposed that uh, uh, these investment advisors they should be this much qualified so they provided guidelines right i think we have discussed it already okay here is the fourth question for today and this question says select the incorrect statements regarding cartels out of the following statements mentioned below five statements given to you regarding a topic called cartels let's see who uh, who gives the correct answer but guys do take care here you have to select the incorrect statements not the correct statements right so the answer to this question is option a option a means our incorrect statements are one option 1 statement 1 3 and 5 so 1 is incorrect 3 is incorrect and 5 is incorrect so now let us learn something about cartels see cartel is a collection of independent businesses and organizations that collude in order to manipulate the price of a product or services so basically they are a group a number of businesses and these businesses they come together or they collude together and they decide okay we are going to provide our services at this much of rate and no one is going to provide service or product below this rate so they in a in a simple sense they uh, they make a team among themselves and they try to uh, and they try to have advantage over this right that is why statement 1 is incorrect because cartels the participants in cartels they are rivals in the same industry so let us take an example for that let's say there are a few cafes near your house now these cafes one provides coffee at rupee 100 one provides at 110 one provides at 120 one provides at 80 right now these cafes they see that customers they fluctuate among them right so what they do is they uh, they hold a meeting together the owners of these cafes and they say that okay we are going to fix a price we all are going to provide coffee at rupees 125 no one is going to provide lesser than that right now customers are bound to pay this price because no one is providing lower than that price so this is you can say is an example of cartel because they have colluded among themselves earlier they were rivals right so if 
if you don't like the cafe where the coffee is being provided at 120 you can go to this one or you can go to, you could have gone to this one or you could have gone to this one right so you had options but now since all of them provide at same price you have no options but to pay rupee 125 as the coffee amount right so they are rivals in the same industry when rivals collude with each other it is called a cartel and that is why statement 1 is wrong statement 2 is correct now statement 3 and statement 4 after that statement 5 so see i just told you that now they are charging a higher price and you are bound to pay it that is why you can infer from this example that cartels have a negative impact on consumers because now they have the power since all of them have become a team they have the power to exploit the uh, buyer right that is why it is not good for consumers to for, uh, to uh, when major producers form cartels among themselves not good for consumers so statement uh, uh, third is incorrect and fourth is correct after that statement 5 cartels are considered a major development in the establishment of free trade no it discourages competition because earlier there was con competition consumer had choice but now when the cartel is formed no choice to consumer no competition so no free trade right so i hope you get all these statements here okay, i think we have discussed most of it so cartels are competitors in the same industry reduce the competition by controlling the price some tactics that the cartels use they are reduction of supply price fixing price fixing collusive bidding and market carving these are some techniques they are used that i used by it as i just gave you an example of price fixing so they can also reduce the supply to boost the prices up in the majority of regions cartels are considered illegal and promoters of anti competitive practices that is why regulators are always trying to uh trying to prevent the formation of cartels among the big among the corporate giants so competition commission of india you must have heard about it it has one job to prevent cartels actions of cartels can hurt consumers through increased prices and lack of transparency opec is one example organization of petrol exporting countries world's largest cartel right so guys there is one question that i would leave to you i would like to ask you what do you think see these cartels they have power over the consumer a firm which is practicing monopoly it also has power over consumer so what do you think the degree of dominance or the degree of offer sorry the degree of power that a cartel has whether it is higher than that of a monopoly or lesser than that of a monopoly so basically you have to tell which one has the higher power or a higher degree of power on the buyers monopoly or a cartel let's see who answers this question correctly so i am hoping to see your answers in the comment box below so earlier also many students have given us very nice answers and i expect the same so this is the last question for today dash is a type of under dash is a type under sectoral rotation strategy of investing that takes advantage of those sectors that tend to do well during specific times during the year so here the key terms during the specific times of the year moving ahead to the solution and the solution says the correct option is a that means calendar strategy first of all we would talk about sectoral rotation strategy so the name itself suggests you that rotation is being done among the sectors that means the investment is not fixed if it is if money is invested into sector 1 let's say if it is invested in pharma uh, it might be invested in it in the coming times so basically moving money into profitable sectors not fixing them into one sector is known as sectoral rotation strategy right under this sectoral rotation strategy there are some types as you can see here the economic cycle strategy it is a strategy where investments are changed according to the economic cycle so sometimes some companies are having a good see if we talk about current times 
automobiles are having uh, are witnessing a very bad phase right so mutual funds and such etfs they might not want to invest in automobiles whereas pharma pharma is experiencing a good time at least relatively better to automobiles so they might be having a good time so basically monitoring that which product is going to be profitable and putting money into that product so this theory asserts that different industry sectors perform better at various stages of the economic cycle so some might do good at uh, the boost period <coughs> so let's say if uh, if 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 bus cycle if boom cycle is going to come or if the economists are expecting growth then it is good to put money into construction companies because they are going to witness huge revenues right so monet uh, fluctuating or altering the investments according to economic cycle investors should buy into the next sector that is about to experience a move up and sector reaches the peak as defined by economic cycle investors should sell that etf etf we have already discussed the meaning i hope all of you know it and if not you can ask for its link in the comments after that under geographical strategy investors can employ selected etfs that take advantage of potential gains by putting money into various economies of the world so you can change that okay if a certain country is experiencing a good time you can put your money into that if you hope to uh, get a reward from it right so this is economic cycle strategy geographical geographic strategy both of them can come under the sector rotation strategy one more which was asked in the question is calendar strategy calendar strategy means that certain industries experience good times in in certain months of the year right so let's say if there is a company that manufacture manufactures woolens obviously its business is going to be high in winters or in months like november december january around new years right whereas uh, companies manufacturing fans and ac so if you remember when there was covid and um, the, uh, the unlocking started due to after uh, the outbreak of covid it was being expected that these electrical appliances like the like acs these companies are going to witness demand because it's very hot and people need some electrical appliances to beat that heat right so they also there is a cycle to them that uh, in summer months they are profitable in winter months not that profitable right so that is a calendar strategy so guys i hope you learned something new from these five questions and if you did then don't forget to hit that like button we'll be back to we'll be back in the next session with some new information that might be helpful for you and i hope to see your answers in the comments that i just asked you uh, to the question that i just asked and till then take care of your health and keep your studies going on thank you for being here i'll see you in the next session